I would compel them and even us to take it and give it to the Lord because He's still mm -hmm. gracious. Mm -hmm. And even in our foolishness, He's still been good. He's still been acting wisely on our behalf. And, um, and so today can be a new day. Today can be a day of saying, God, I want to ask you for wisdom. All right, you know what? I, you know, um, what I'm about to read, I want to read something really quickly from the scriptures. And it's, it's slightly offensive. Okay. We're ready. Okay. <laughs> Bring but, it. But, but I believe, I believe that's what the Holy Spirit, he, he, he does in our lives sometimes. Sometimes I think we're so geared, especially in our culture and our society, we are always wanting things that affirm us. That and that, yeah. And so sometimes if we're not careful, we'll try and bend the word to us in our situations mm -hmm. instead of us bending to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I say offensive, I'm saying it in that regards because it, it's a standard. Yes. It cannot bend. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's live and it's sharp and it's active, it won't dim its shine to fit in with us. Mm -hmm. He won't change his essence nope. mm -hmm. to win favor with us. Mm -hmm, right. He is who he is yeah. and he calls us up and he still loves us as we are, but he is unchangeable. He can mm -hmm. change his mind. He cannot change his nature. Right. So therefore, anyway, we, most of us, we all, <laughs> all of us, I'm sure we know this particular passage, but I wanted to read the verses that go along with it. This is James chapter one, verse five that we've been talking yeah. about. It says, if any man lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Verse six. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Verse seven, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person, now he even goes to dog him out. Such a person <laughs> is double-minded and unstable in all they do. That's offensive to us these days because we really want to believe that if he says something, I have a right, I have the space to doubt it. And it's so he's okay with it. That's not what I just read. He said, if we're going to ask for wisdom, we have to believe by faith without knowing the tangible of the wisdom that we have received it from God and we can't doubt. And, and when I was reading this again, I was like, it reminded me of the serpent in the garden. You know, when he came to Eve and said, did God really say? It's a, an indictment on who God is. He said, no, God knows that when you do this, this is going to happen. Like mm -hmm. basically God's lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... He's, James is saying, when you ask, you must not doubt. Mm -hmm. You can't be tossed back and forth. You can't come and say, well, you know, God, do you know what you're talking about? This doesn't look right. He's like, do you want wisdom or do you not? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, you can have a both and. And I think we have a culture of really that both and. I can say I'm walking in faith and still do my own thing. Or mm -hmm. I can contest his word. Like, you know, we can ask questions, like our children can ask questions of us, but there's a difference between asking a question for, like like Mary asked in the Bible of Gabriel, how is this going to be? I'm going to be pregnant by, you know, the Spirit of God, how? And then with the same angel, Zachariah asked the question, and he was struck dumb, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but his question was one of more of, I doubt what you say. How do I know that you are telling me the truth? How do I know that this is real, opposed to... I believe what you said is real. Can you give me some, like, how is this going to happen? I'm not mm -hmm. sure of the details because I don't understand. I need, right. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. So the same angel rebuked Zachariah, struck him mute, and answered Mary's question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gabriel was um, offended because he said, I stand in the presence of God. Yeah. Like, I came to deliver a word to you, and you're going to doubt yeah. basically what I'm giving you? So I think sometimes we minimize the power of doubt against the word and the wisdom of God. And we feel like it's, it's a light indictment. Mm -hmm. And God's like, you asked me for something. Mm -hmm. I gave it to you. Wow. And now the audacity to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should trust you. Mm -hmm. I'm God. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think if we put it in that perspective, 
then when we do ask, you know, you know, then we have to trust that, okay, God, by faith, I'm doing the next right thing, mm -hmm. the next best thing that comes, because mm -hmm. I'm believing by faith, mm -hmm. you've given me wisdom. To receive God's wisdom, we have to start from a position of, I'm listening, God. It does matter what our heart posture is because it's with this attitude that we pray. Instead of coming to God and saying, this is what I want, this is how I want it to go, when we don't, but instead we have a posture of, Lord, I'm here as your child. And because I know you want what's best for me, I am open and I am listening and I am expectant that your voice is going to direct me in the best way that I should go. And the Bible teaches that if we don't lean to our own understanding, that we'll find a better solution. And I used to do that with my, my kids. My, I became a single mom at the age when my uh, youngest son was 11 years old. And um, we would have these conflicts. And I was like, I would go to God and say, God, I need wisdom. And I tell my son, I can't even answer you right now. I have to ask God for wisdom because I don't know what to tell you. Because if I tell you out of my flesh, you're not even going to like me. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I would ask God for wisdom. And then I would do the next thing that came to mind. And, it, and sometimes it was, give me your phone. Sometimes it was, you need to write a letter. Sometimes go in your room and read the word and come out and tell me what he said. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was, I just did it. Believing by faith, that was the right answer. And 10 times out of 10, it was the right answer. Mm -hmm. The result was what it needed to have been because I asked for wisdom and I believe by faith I had received it yeah. and I acted accordingly. Yeah. And so, and when I didn't do those things, then my reward was folly and it was yeah. proof that I should have done yeah. the wisdom test. Yeah. So. It's so funny how you talk about this, how we will ask for something specific. God gives us something specific and they're like, I don't know, is that really you? <laughs> See, like, yes. You asked oh, for that yes. thing. I gave you that, that thing. thing. And now you're wondering if it was me? Absolutely, yeah. I had a um, difficult situation. This was probably like, I don't know, four years ago or something. And we were going to remodel our bathroom. We Our house is built in 83. And so it's kind of dated. And, and we were going to do like new tile and just some fun stuff or whatever. This is years ago. And so we had this contractor that was going to work on it. And he was kind of like, he was a, he was a real contractor, but he also just kind of like struggled. You know, like yeah. you, just, you just didn't really know like if he's like really... <laughs> going to show up or whatever. And so um, we had paid the deposit, which was half of what the full remodel, which was going to be, which is like thousands of dollars. Right. And so this was a big thing we had budgeted and saved yes. for and whatever. And so um, he was really struggling with the timeline of like showing up and when he was mm. going to make it happen. Mm. And I was going to try to get it done before my, I think this, I guess before Mary Grace was born. So this was around timing before I was going to have my third baby. Well, y'all coming close to the time of like, where we're kind of in that window where it's not going to get done. I felt the Lord tell me, give him the money. Cancel wow. the project and give him the money. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> and I just wrestled. It made no sense in the logical. It made no sense in the yeah. logical. It felt wrong in the mm -hmm. moral, yeah. right? Of like, like, you're supposed to do this work. We paid, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like, I wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. It made no sense from the logical, the practical, and the moral, all that. Like, it was like, you're wrong that he's mm -hmm. just going to like, because I think we had talked about him giving me a refund and because he couldn't do it in time. And I just kept following up and God was like, leave him alone, give him the money. He mm -hmm. owes me money. And, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So there was this one night and I was, again, praying for wisdom of like, Lord, like, are you sure? I know yeah. I've asked a hundred times, are you sure? But like, are you really sure? Because yeah. this feels crazy and we really need that money and da, 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 da. Well, that night where I'm putting my kids to bed and they're snuggling in bed with me and my son Carter was, you know, I don't know, four at the time. And he said, I want to read that book. And he points to Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest. Wow. <laughs> a light read for a four-year-old. Right. For anyone wow. that's curious. Wow. And I was like, no, no, no. He goes, no, I want to read that book. And he opens it up. He goes, read this page. Four-year-old. So I read that page. And the words were something to the effect of, woe unto you mm. if you know what you're supposed to do and don't do it. Mm. Mm. Maybe God is trying to tell you And something. I'm like, through the mouth of babes. Yeah. Wow. The Lord was like, Wow. Christy, I kind of felt like it was, this is your last chance. Mm -hmm. I've told you what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you to obey. Now, wouldn't you know, and I don't, I don't want to go down this path of like getting into all this, but it doesn't always happen like this, but 
a month later, mm. we get a check from a project of one of my husband's buildings. And don't you know, it was double exactly. It was overage. The overage, we had a number we expected. The overage was double the amount that we mm. had wow. given the contractor. And that. I still don't know what happened if he needed it. For, does it matter? Wow. Yeah. You're but, obedient. But it, but it goes back to what you said, yeah. where we ask, yeah. Lord, give me wisdom. He gives it to us. And we still are like, ah! sure yeah yeah but it's like i yeah. love those words yeah. from my four-year-old yeah woe unto you yeah. if you know what you're yeah. supposed to do and don't yeah. yes yeah. and i love that story and yours as well because i feel like the holy spirit's so faithful to nudge uh-huh. <laughs> yeah let me right? help you along let me help you along we're like, struggling and god is like holy poking mm-hmm. right yeah. like just regularly reminding us but one of the things that i love about the character of god is god never forces yeah yeah god didn't force you right. yeah. to do it because a loving father doesn't force us. Yeah. A loving father wants to grow our obedience. Yeah. And in both yeah. of those stories, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the opportunity for us to continue to walk out. What does wisdom look like here, yeah. right? And, and so often we don't want to do it. I think it's those moments in time when um, we just slow down for a minute to hear from God, to just give Him a listening ear because He's always speaking to us. Um, I think the closer we get to Him, the easier it is to hear Him. Um, he can He can answer in the wind, He can answer in the thunder, but normally He talks in a still, small voice, and you've got to get close enough to listen. In thinking about that, I'm thinking of Proverbs. I love the version where it says, the world of the generous yes. gets mm-hmm. larger, larger and larger. And larger. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I'm thinking in that application mm-hmm. that for a young couple mm-hmm. to give up money, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. Little yes. kids, mm-hmm. you, you, could, you need it for a lot of things. But the Holy Spirit was telling you something that you couldn't know. Mm-hmm. See, a God yeah. wisdom moment. Right, right. And there's another point to always remember. There's two kinds of sin. There's the sin of commission mm-hmm. where I do the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. But there's the sin of omission That's right. where I didn't do what I could have done. Mm, yeah. And I really think that often for the believer who's asking for this divine, and don't we all want yeah. the yes. God right. idea, yeah. the, right. the, right. the better, the right. divine. And your testimony right there is so amazing because you linked it to something that happened good to you later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do think that's an important point mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. that you had felt this calling to have a big world Mm -hmm. and to just say, okay, I don't understand it, but I'm not going to get trapped Mm. in that pit of um, arguing. Mm -hmm. You know, our friend John Bevere, he wrote an amazing book about Satan's bait. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the idea there that the devil ensnares us into conflict with people, not when we're even wrong. See, this is the Mm -hmm. good point Mm -hmm. that I I think it's... You were right. Mm -hmm. See, being right is overrated. Yeah. Mm. Say it again, Robin. Mm, can, we young girl. can we camp there? All right, now. Number one yes. <laughs> being right mm-hmm. is overrated mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. because being right didn't mm-hmm. keep you on the road, the upward road mm-hmm. to your prosperity, which was what? Having all that you need to do what God called you to do. And you could have become ensnared yeah. in that mm-hmm. trap mm-hmm. of taking an offense mm-hmm. and being right. And by yeah. the way, you can hire lawyers, mm-hmm. you can get your mother, you can get your sister, and they'll all agree <laughs> right? with you That's right. that exactly. you were right. Absolutely. And that, by cracky, that guy, he's ripping people off. Mm-hmm. And then you can do the whole thing that he's probably ripping other people off. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've got to protect the community from this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, <laughs> yeah. 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 you can do that. It's very real. We laugh, but yeah. that's very real. Yeah. 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 It could happen. Yeah. So now you've got everybody on your side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, Satan, the evil one, he has trapped mm-hmm. you and your husband and your family and your community, not to the positive, new, right. creative, right. fresh, right. redeemed flow. Right. Mm-hmm. You're out of the flow. Yeah. You're over there mm-hmm. in the pit mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of wow. the things we are really good at slash guilty of 
is getting people on our team mm -hmm. and making a yeah. whole case for ourselves. And it brings me back to what you started with, yeah. Nicole, and that is that God is not interested in bending towards us, no. mm -hmm. our case, no. our position of rightness. No. No. He will not. No. And so almost when we bolster ourselves up with all these people that are, yes, 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 mm -hmm. you're right, da, 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 it keeps us, I think, from even hearing from God's yeah, wisdom yeah. because we've got so much noise that are just Talks echoing. to and fro, yep. carried about with every yes. word of God. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And it, yep. become, it, it can be a barrier yep. for us, for women watching, but let's rewind. from hearing from God. You were right. See, and I think that's an important point. Totally, you, yes, you, yes. You were right in the face of the law. You were right in the face of the... But the Holy Spirit a thing. was Wanted revealing... to use you to <laughs> minister yes. to somebody who needed it. Amen. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And, so, but I think <laughs> and to teach right? you that money was not yeah. the source to begin sure. with. That's right. what's such a barrier, though, because if, if I was so busy calling all my friends, like, oh, can you believe this guy... <laughs> You won't hear. No, you, right you will now. begin to to drown out that Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's, and we all have those. Yeah, we all have those opportunities. Yep. Yeah, for the like, I love how you said even in parenting that you'll go. I need wisdom in this moment. I don't do that. That was convicting for me. <laughs> I don't. I'm like, listen, give me that phone. Give me that. <laughs> give me everything. Get in your room. You're making me crazy. I don't have anywhere else to turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but for us to remember that in any situation, yeah. big, small, yeah. or in between, we can ask God. God, what do you want mm -hmm. me to do here? Yeah. And then when he answers mm -hmm. to obey. Connect with us on social media. Like, comment, and share your favorite moments from today. Join the conversation with women all over the world getting better together. One of the things that I'm amazed by is that God is, he never is interested in you being comfortable like, oh, you've arrived. Because no. that's what we're talking about no. today, right? No Growing yeah. in wisdom. It's like he will continue to stretch you. Like, oh, you you got here. Good for you. Okay, we're going to go here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to go here. He's yeah. going to continually make you uncomfortable as you grow in wisdom. And we never arrive. Yeah. We never get there and go, I've made it, nailed it, got an A+. Plus. I right. can take a different class. Yeah. Right. We're always being stretched. <laughs> and yep. so I think if we remember that, then when we get to that place, it's not like, oh, uh, this is a scary place. This is, I've done something wrong. It's like, no, 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 this is right where we're supposed to be. That's right. He's asking you. He's asking you. He's asking us to do things that are new and uncomfortable. Yeah, God has always been more interested in me becoming more courageous than more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there have been That's times good. where I'm like, Lord, please, please. Yeah. I, I just, a I'm few, good. Days, <laughs> few days of comfort, right? Yeah. But he's always stretching my courage. And I feel like often it has to do with this area of being right. Yeah. And, yeah. and we have such a propensity to be right. And I feel like oftentimes the question is, what do you value more? Do you want to be right? Yeah. Or do you want to do right? That's right. Do there you want you to go. do what is righteous? Mm -hmm. Like what the Lord requires of you. Yeah. And there's so much more joy mm -hmm. when you do what's right. It is a work in progress of me saying, okay, God, help me to continue to um, put other people in front of me to not to say it's all about me and my will. You know, even in my relationship, my husband, I love my husband to pieces, you know. Um, my husband is an alpha male. I'm an alpha female, hey, you know what I'm saying? Um, but there are times that even in us becoming one, that we have to say, okay, let me step back and prefer you. Let me humble myself. And, and actually, when both of us decide to humble ourselves, we seem to have the best outcome on the decision. When we decide to say, okay, I know I've done it this way, and I've had success in the past, and you've done it that way, and you've had success in the past. Well, right now, whose way is going to win? And we both go, okay, well, come let us reason. You know, let's find a compromise, or let me try your way. No, go on, let me try it. Let me try your way instead. When we do that, I'm telling you, it's like God allows our position of humbling ourselves, of taking the back seat, to actually be the best thing that could have happened to the whole scenario. Think of how many relationships we've screwed up because we wanted to be right. Yeah. right. Where do you think yes. that comes from? I was just thinking, pride. Where, where does that come Our from? Our pride. Like, yeah. like even let's camp there for a second. Like, Because mm -hmm. it just eats away at all of us. Mm -hmm. We all have the desire. There, it's yeah. not a personality style. Like we all have this need to like, be right, have the last, last word, and it gets us into trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. The scripture says our pride. <laughs> comes from the devil. Uh, yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And that feeling of defensiveness <laughs> Right. I, I think we get scared that who's going to come to my defense. Mm -hmm. We don't want to take responsibility for maybe where we've done wrong or have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so 
we armor up, right? Yeah. We, we put up our defenses. And I think some of the most beautiful moments that, um, you know, I, I think about in my marriage, right? And, and the different times where I've been defensive mm -hmm. or when I've wanted to be right, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Jarrett is wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and I try to point it out mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. uh, we had this amazing new uh, counselor that we started meeting with. And, and we were just having these moments where, there wasn't any big major blow up, but we just were missing each other, yeah. right? And so we're like, okay, let, let's bring somebody in to, to talk this through. And her name is Joy. She's incredible. And I remember her in, in the very first session, she's like, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to turn and face each other. And I want you to answer this question. The way that I'm bringing disconnection to our relationship is by. <laughs> And I'm like, well, you just go start with owning it. Yeah. I, I, the way I, you are bringing it. What we need to do is reverse this. Like, right. I'd like to point out how Jared is right. not That's bringing connection for. to our relationship. And, you know, we chuckled and we laughed. And, and she led us back and forth. And I watched as we took ownership, as we really looked inside over how we kept trying to be right. right. I watched that defensiveness melt. I watched our love for one another increase. Mm -hmm. That's great. So good. I, it, it was such a beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. moment. And I think so yeah. often we get so stuck yeah. in, I got to be right. Mm -hmm. I have to win this argument. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, we're going about it all the wrong way. It, it's the wrong way to be right. right. Yeah. And, and God in his loving kindness is like, mm -hmm. no, yeah. my righteousness is always what goes yeah. before That's you. Right. It's not your righteousness. Yeah. It's mine. That's and good. you know, the whole, the whole point is to bear fruit. That's mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. So the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, mm -hmm. yep. meekness, and temperance. Those are all what we need. Yes. Those are mm -hmm. growing in grace. Yes. God takes us from glory to glory to glory mm -hmm. to bear fruit. Yeah. And right. what if what if we didn't know we had fruit unless it's called upon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So That's in good. those moments yes. of obedience yeah. or in those moments mm -hmm. of disconnect yeah. or those moments of struggle, those moments of fear, what, what am I supposed to be bearing right now? Yeah. Why does this feel like a growing pain? Yeah. Yeah. It's to bear fruit, it's yeah. good. to bear more love, to yeah. bear more kindness, more long suffering, yeah, good, more Lord. patience, mm -hmm. more goodness, not to be right all the time. So often when pride is driving and directing my life, it's, it's me taking the steering wheel. And when I choose to humble myself and to really walk in the ways of humility, it's, it's really moving aside uh, and, and trusting and knowing God has always had the wheel. Um, he's always been driving, He's always been directing, and it's trusting that His ways are higher than my ways, His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Um, I, I don't know the, the movement of God. There are parts about God that are so mysterious and learning to make peace and trusting in that mystery um, is, is one of the most beautiful ways that we can actually practice humility. And we're not supposed to judge. The scripture says, don't judge. We know that. Mm -hmm. But you know, the scripture also says, Lori, that you'll know them by their, by their fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes I've had some friends that um, they really are committed to being right. Mm -hmm. And often I've even thought, you know, if I just kind of turn the sound off mm -hmm. and just look at their exterior mm -hmm. while they're telling their story, how right they are, yeah. how right yeah. they are, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, only God looks on the heart. Right. Yeah. People see us from the outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really while different. I'm delivering my point mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm being right, again, I'm looking you, wrong. I'm the only one. <laughs> you know, we yeah. judge other yeah, people by what they do, but yeah. we judge ourselves by, by our, our motives. Motive, our intent. Right. Yep. But people don't know what my That's motives right. are. Right. All they know is how I come across, mm -hmm. how right I need to yeah, be. Yeah. So the question becomes, do I want to be right 
or do I want to have relationship? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. only relationship can bring influence. Mm -hmm. So if I'm really committed to the big idea, which is God's law, yeah. God's idea, then I can trust him that I may not be the only messenger. Right. Somebody else could be showing up who's also right, mm -hmm. but maybe can deliver the story in another way. And so for me, I've learned that if I can just back up, work a little bit more on my fruit, mm -hmm. <laughs> smile, hug, kiss, mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know what? Here's an idea. Could I read something to you and let it go? Yeah. The world of the generous, like we're saying, gets yeah. larger and my world expands in my relationship without me having to be the one who is Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that you brought that verse up because I think the second part of that verse says, you know, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy, stingy. gets smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And when we're in relationship with others and we constantly have to be right, people really don't want to be in relationship yeah, with us right, anymore, right? right? right. right. Our, our relational worlds start to shrink because we're known by, oh, she's the one that yeah. always has to be right. Like yeah. she's the one that always has to make her point. She's the one yeah. that has to have yeah. her last word. The thing that I used to think about and still try to remind myself of is do I want to be right or do I want reconciliation? Because when I enter into conflict, especially with my husband, because that happens on a regular basis when you live with someone, and I think, do I want to be right or do I want reconciliation? I approach the conversation completely differently depending on my answer to that question. If I want to be right, I'm going to dig my heels in, make my case, use all the words, and tell him why I'm right. But if I want reconciliation, I'm probably just going to listen more. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to change my entire posture toward him and how we have that conversation. So I love what Robin said. She said, do you want to be right or do you want the relationship? Another way to say it is, do you want to be right or do you want reconciliation, especially in terms of conflict? And so when you begin to ask yourself that question and practice asking it to yourself every time you feel yourself climbing on your high horse, it'll get a little easier to climb back off, listen, and maintain the relationship instead of being right. I love that we're talking about fruit because, gosh, when I've let fruit go too long in my kitchen and it is no longer, <laughs> it's no longer, you know, good, it's noticeable. Yeah. yeah. Like, yes. you know, that's a great idea. Uh, left like out fruit yeah. that is like when you see a Next. banana that you're like, oh, this is even past Next. banana bread, yeah. right? Yeah, like, exactly. this can't even become something good. Yeah. And, and it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. And it's I rotten. think it's rotten. And I think yeah. people, can see that in our yeah. lives. They can sniff it in our lives. But when there's good fruit, oh, it, you're so drawn to it. Yeah. You know, like fresh, good fruit. You're like, yeah. I want that. Yeah. I want more of that. And yeah. I want that to be the case in my relationships. Yeah. I want people mm -hmm. to not know me as somebody that always has to be right. Yeah. I want somebody to know me as... And they do know. Yeah. See, that's yeah. the Love creepy me. part. Yeah. You know, we think we're hiding behind our <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do know. Yeah. 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 We're, we're not hiding from anyone, first of all, not God, but mm -hmm. we're also not hiding from people that we're in relationship yeah. with. Yeah. And I do think that we want to just stop a moment and say that all of this idea mm -hmm. of being right or not right, it all comes down to God's word. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That we have to go Absolutely. back to what the mm -hmm. book says. Absolutely. Right. Well, and I'll, that's why I love how you talked about um, pride, because that's yeah. definitely it for me. Like, I don't try to be right. I just think I am right. Yeah. Right? Like, like I'm not trying to act here, people. Like, I, right? Like, like, we all, we all really think that. We're not trying to put on a front. We really think it. And so that is that pride. And so I think, you know, you use the example of the speck and the plank, Robin. And I think that that one scripture, back to God's word, that one scripture can help take you from this place of pride to a place of humility. So I've, mm -hmm. I've, uh, my husband and I in our marriage were total opposites, like a lot of people. And, you know, he'll do something that I'm frustrated by, <laughs> just like I do with him all the time. And let's say that this, I started this a couple of years ago and it has helped me get off my high horse, which I just, 
have a tendency to get on. Like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I cannot believe he forgot to go run that error. I, just, I mean, I have, like, yeah. he remembers 100 things a day at yeah. work. Yeah. He can't remember one thing. Yeah. One yeah. thing. Yeah. Can't remember yeah. one thing. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, you're just. Yes. And yeah. the enemy's like, yeah, yeah, you're so right. And I'm like, I oh, am, yeah, I know. <laughs> This one question. Because I am. That's right. <laughs> this one question has helped me get off my high horse and invite humility in. And I don't always do it, but it is my, it's almost my checks and balances for myself to not, you know, be this prideful person. The question is this. Have you ever done that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever done that, Christy? Yeah. Have you ever forgotten something he asked you to do? Yeah. Oh, all well, the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually forget things all the time. He, he's much better at remembering than me. Yeah. Or fill in the blank with whatever the situation is that I'm frustrated by. I stop myself from my, and I go, have you ever done that? And y'all, it's just when you're faced it's with the good. plank in your own eye, mm-hmm. you just settle right on down. He yeah. comes, I'm like, no problem, babe, no problem. I'll <laughs> yeah. take it next yeah. time. Cause I know that tomorrow I'm going to forget 15 things right. that he will have unbelievable mm-hmm. grace for That's me right. because yeah. he is very patient. Yeah. Lots of long suffering from Matt Wright. <laughs> right. But I think that when we get to this place of pride yeah. and we get on our high horse and we surround ourselves with the people like, yeah, yeah. Then we get the voice of the enemy going, you're so right. He's so wrong. It just, it, it is, it turns into really bad yeah. fruit. And none of us want that. Yeah. None of us set out and say like, oh, I really want lots of conflict in my marriage and I want to, you know, turn off everyone around me. Yeah. But we do it incrementally a little bit at a time when we just convince ourselves of how right we are and how everyone else has all the planks and we've just got this tiny little speck. But if we could flip it and bring humility in, it changes your whole perspective, which we need on a daily basis. I think when we have that plank in our eyes, like we're just, we're thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought. And when it comes to humility, I'm the only person who can humble me. If somebody else tries to humble me, that's called humiliation. If I do it myself, that's called humility. God's not going to work humility for me. I have to surrender that myself. And so when I decide to say, I'm gonna go low, and not, I'm not seeing myself less than, I'm seeing myself in the right light. The Bible tells us to look at ourselves in the right light and balance with balanced scales. When I do that, then I'm able to see my neighbor in the right way because my filter has changed. My filter is not just big I, little you. My filter is big him, little I, big you. And then I can help you in, in with the proper assessment. And so um, I think, again, we are all called to go low and it's not a one-time thing. It's not, hey, I humbled myself last year. I humbled myself yesterday. Every single day, like you said, give us this day our daily bread. A part of that daily bread is go on and go low today so nobody has to push you down. If I humble myself, I don't have to worry about being humiliated. I'm already down there. And then I can wait for God to lift me up like He promised He would do. And I love that you bring it back to a question of yourself, right? And, like and you I, said, what? how am I contributing yes, to exactly. this? Yes, exactly. And, and I think the idea of, of the speck and the log, going mm-hmm. back to yeah. how we opened even, uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask for it. Amen. And I think that's just such a great question that Jesus taught us. Right. Yeah. Is there a big old plank in my eye, Lord? Mm-hmm. Right? right? Like, yeah. do we pause and ask ourselves the question, mm-hmm. or am I so fixated on the little speck over in them. And and so God, would you reveal to me, what's the plank? Would you just reveal it to me? (laughs) And usually I don't even need to get to the end of the sentence, (laughs) right? right? It's usually like, oh yeah, there it is. Yep, Yep. I see it, it's just a big old log coming right out of my eye, right? And and I think it's that pausing and it's that breathing. Um, I know for me, I I have to just give some space before I speak. I often feel like when I ask that question, God's like, would you just be quiet for a minute? Mm -hmm. Like, would you you just be still before you have to fill this with words? Mm -hmm. And it's usually when I reflect and then I pause and I, you know, I Mm -hmm. I listen to what's really going on in me. I'm like, oh, I see. That's wisdom. There's a log. There's a log. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's something I've I've been working on and I'm still working on it. Probably will be till I die, but Mm -hmm. is... Although I'm a fast talker from Cincinnati, I can blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I try to be a slow responder. Explore more of the stories and inspiring content you love from Better Together on our YouTube channel, Better Together TV. Subscribe today and never miss a new upload. But I was thinking of something earlier that you had said, though, too, Robin, when you were talking about um, 
trying to be right all the time and people mm -hmm. don't want to hear you. You know, I think if we come in the right spirit, you know, you've heard people who have said the wrong thing mm -hmm. with the right spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's more receivable than sometimes people who say the right thing with the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, no, you came at me wrong. I can't even hear what you're trying mm -hmm. to tell me because your attitude was wrong. Your tone was wrong. Your face was wrong. You're, you were just wrong. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we know First Corinthians talk about that. I can have the tongues of men and angels and I don't have love. It's just noisy. It's, exactly. it's not, it's nothing, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think part of our aim is to, Lord, help me to say the right things with the right spirit and then leave it. Mm. And then receive somebody else's opinion on the matter, mm -hmm. someone else's mm -hmm. take on the matter, to know that there is, let me exhibit the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. and not just uh, wag a flag over what I may think is a gift, mm -hmm. or this the gift of gab or the gift of this or whatever else it says. But I think that's something that we should work on, all of us. And I, that's something that I am working on myself because I've been guilty of all the above. But I did want to read something. And you know, I'm, we're all word babies and I'm going to try and I know this isn't a Bible study. I know, I know. <laughs> but I really want to read this because I believe that in Proverbs chapter eight, I love the fact that Solomon, he personified wisdom as a female. So yes. we are, she, she is, you know, Don't you she love is, that? Yes, I she's love one that. of our sisters, same yeah. here. So I love it. But I think that she just nails it. I think he nails it. And the things that she says about herself. Yeah are the attributes we want. It's the wisdom that we need. It's the clarity that we need. It's the direction. It's the power. It's the whole thing. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, I just wanted to, you know, I'm going to try and, you know, read it. And it says in Proverbs chapter eight, verse one, it says, does not wisdom call out, does not understanding raise her voice at the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city at the entrance. She cries aloud to you, old people. I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. By me, kings reign and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern and nobles all who rule on the earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ago at the very beginning when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command. That's where I got, who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean you can only come this far? Right here. Anyway, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. Wow. Proverbs 8.
And she's telling about herself. Mm -hmm. She's like, you want to know me? This is who I am. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, we were saying how we recognize on arrogance and pride in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wisdom saying, no, that's not me. Mm -hmm. Wisdom says, humble yourself, like you said. Go to your husband, go to your spouse, go to your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And say, I'm not always right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this is how I see it. Now I want to see how you see mm -hmm. it. You know, wisdom chooses those paths because wisdom has power. Yeah. Wisdom has, you know, glory in, in what she brings as well. But wisdom knows how to humble herself. Yeah. And so because she does, we do. You know, the Bible simply says that we just need to ask for wisdom. You know, God isn't just um, hanging us out to dry to try to figure it out on our own. He says, ask of me and I'll give it to you. And I'm not gonna beat you down for it. I'm gonna give it to you generously. I'm gonna give you wisdom when you ask for it. So that's a simple step. When you need to hear from God, when you, when you need to know what to do, that's a simple ask, and then it's simple for God to answer you. Yeah, and I think of that passage, how God opposes the proud, mm -hmm. yeah. but gives grace to the humble, exalts yeah. the humble. And it's a hard I, I think some of the hardest but best moments in my life have been owning my pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Have been the moments where I've just... Uh, really been honest with myself, with mm -hmm. others, with God. Mm -hmm. And I've had those humbling moments of just going, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. I made a mistake mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I have a do-over? Yeah. Yeah. The way I said that wasn't what I really meant. Will you forgive me? Yeah. And uh, gosh, it, God softens my heart mm -hmm. yeah. in those moments, yeah. right? I, I think about moments with my husband or with my kids or, or people in our church, right? Where I've just humbled myself. Yeah. Um, and aren't we drawn to people that mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. It's like when I see somebody really honest, authentic, yeah. Yeah. sincere, I'm like, oh, I want to know you more, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I, I don't want to to don't just want. see the shiny, yeah. Yeah, no. prideful, no. put together yeah. self. I want to know the real you, yeah. you the, the vulnerable real you. Yeah. And, and I feel like our real selves connect to others' real, real selves, selves, right? right. And, and That's right. I know God God has used every one of those moments where my pride got plucked, right? And it was like, okay, are you willing to humble yourself, yeah. Jeannie, and own it? And yeah. it, it's interesting. I, I don't know if I've ever thought about this before, but I feel like those are the moments where God matures me. You know, it's like yeah. he's developing fruit when I pay attention to that pride. Yeah humble myself yeah. and say, no, I, I choose yeah. wisdom yeah. more than my own arrogance and pride. No, I, I was just thinking yeah. as a, as a little girl, when I got disciplined, that was wisdom. That was yeah. humbling, but where I grew. That's right. You know, and normally it's through a lot of disciplining that we grow. On the way here, I was um, thinking about something that, you know, like, like I've never, I don't think I've ever told this story publicly. I remember the only time I can remember ever really talking back to my dad, you know, dad was just, you know, my dad went to see Jesus in 2016. Dad's just the finest man I ever knew. Honestly, when I was a kid, I wanted to marry my dad. <laughs> but anyway, I was about 16 years old and um, I was being a, a bratty teenager and um, I can't remember what it was over, but I remember saying something really grievous to my dad and just like, cause we didn't talk back. You just don't do that. Like, I can't even imagine it even as a grown up. And, um, my dad was so upset with me. He was about to come for me. And I remember my mom holding him back saying, no, Napoleon, no, Napoleon. But I was just like, just mouthing off, mouthing off. Mom was like, go to your room, go to your room. And um, after that moment, there really, it was, it was nothing. It was, I was being bratty, honestly. And we all, all calmed down. And I remember like for the next probably six months or so, I was just mad and I was going to, I was going to talk. I talked to him when I had to, and I would be cordial, but I had this air of, I'm still mad at you. I'm going to hold this grudge. And I remember every like Thursday, dad would bring snacks and he would bring them home and he would buy our, our favorite chips and he would put them on the table for us. And for a while, I just refused to take my chips. I was just like, I'm going to show you I'm still mad. And dad was still kind. He kept being kind to me. He kept, hey, yeah. bubs, you want to do this? Hey, bubs, you know, just. And the more he was like kind, I was just kind of like, I'm just going to set my ways. But I was kind enough to where I couldn't get in trouble. But he couldn't change my heart. He could see my actions, but he couldn't, you know. And after several months, I remember I developed a knot in my chest. 
Mm. They took me to the pediatrician and mm. took me back a couple of times and it kept growing. And I remember I, I knew what it was. And I, I and they said, if you come back again, we're going to have to refer you to the surgeon. And and I knew it was a root of bitterness. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I went to Sister Dottie at our church and I talked to her and she's like, you got to forgive. You got to mm. forgive. And um, the thing I had to forgive really was more me than dad. So I chose to forgive even when there wasn't really an offense that he had. Mm. It was more me. But um, I did not act wisely, but my dad responded wisely to me Mm. and he loved me and he still cared for me. And um, the rest of my life after that whole episode, it was, I lived my life in such a way with my dad to not just say, I'm sorry, because I wasn't trying to do penance, but to let him know that I do respect you. Like the honor I did not show in that moment, I will multiply honor on this side Mm -hmm. now. You know, to whom much is forgiven, we love much. Mm -hmm. And he forgave me in that moment. And so, you know, build your house. I'm going to do whatever I can. You're (laughs) my man. You're like, just, Mm -hmm. and my dad was always my biggest champion. He was always like, You know, he made us all feel like his favorite. He was always bragging. He always blessed me in every stage of my life, even when things went south. But he was there. And I I have no regrets on the things that I responded to in wisdom. Mm. But the things that I did not respond to in wisdom are the things that I know I'm forgiven for. But they're things that are still kind of like, ah, Mm. I wish I could turn the clock Mm. back there. God's wisdom is both vertical and horizontal. So what that means is that as we're in touch with God, our awareness, I I wanna be careful and I wanna be clear that this faith walk is exactly that. It's a walk. It's one day after the other, and it's a growing experience. When we are new in Christ and we're new to the Bible and we're new to listening to God, it can sound very confusing. But divine wisdom comes to us by us taking time out of our daily schedule and by just quieting ourselves, reading His Scripture, which never changes, and then just listening in our heart. Why? I just said it at the beginning, that divine wisdom is vertical. It changes me to hear God's voice, but it also changes my relationships with others. Because through that awareness, as I pray about my own growth and as I pray about relationships with others or even circumstances in their lives, there will come revelation. There will come coincidences or answers to prayer. And as those actions are coming, things are going to change. Let me tell you, things are going to change for your loved ones. Things are going to change at your job. Things are going to change as you hear God's divine wisdom. And so I don't know who's watching, and I don't know if people may have felt like, hey, I've blown it. Yeah. And I have some things that I have not responded in wisdom yeah. to, and I'm ashamed of. And, you know, I wish I could erase that part of my life. But I, I would compel them, and even us, to take it and give it to the Lord, because mm-hmm. He's still mm-hmm. gracious. Mm-hmm. And even in our foolishness, He's still been good. Yes. He's still been acting wisely on our behalf. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so today can be a new day. Today yeah. can be a day of saying, God, I want to ask you for wisdom. Mm -hmm. I want to receive wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I want to will my will Mm -hmm. to your will Mm -hmm. to do what it is that you've actually called me to do. Mm -hmm. And so I want to pray. And I know I've said a lot of words, but um, hopefully the spirit of what I'm trying Mm -hmm. to say is being conveyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Mm -hmm. and today, you know, let it be a day that we say, God, I want what you want for me. And I want to respond in faith. And I want to let go of the doubt in what you've actually called me to do, even if I don't understand it completely. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, sir, we thank you so much for your goodness, Lord. Lord, we thank you because although we are not right most of the time in how we think, we are prideful at times, Lord. We are disrespectful at times. We have our own idea of how things should work out, Lord. You still love us and you're there for us, sir. 
And Lord, I ask that today that you would help us, Lord, even as we confess those things that we know we have done wrong or we might be doing wrong, Lord. But I pray that you would help us, Lord, that you would give us the grace that we need, Lord, to have the faith to believe you for whatever it is that you tell us to do, sir, and that we would act quickly in obedience, Lord. We wouldn't have slow obedience, which is no obedience, but we would have obedience to those things that you have put in front of us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that as we take that first step, that we would trust you for the second and the third and the fourth, and that we wouldn't go ahead of you, assuming that we just know how to get there, Lord, but that we would trust you in every facet of the journey. And so again, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your help. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for being with us even when we get it wrong because you're still a right God and you love us, sir. And so we thank you for all these things and we trust you. Thank you for wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen.